Technical College for helping us out with this. Um, my name is Alice. I'm 10 years old and I'm a beginning programmer. Uh, this is my dad Adam and we're going to be doing this talk together. Okay. So um, we're learning about the command line. Some of you may not even know what the command line is uh, so that's why we're teaching you about it. So what is the command line? Uh, the command line is a way to use the um, a way to use the computer from the keyboard, um, and it's basically a su secret, super powerful interface to everything the computer can do, as long as you don't blow it up. Yeah. So it's um, it's harder to learn than a program with images you click on but it's way more powerful for things you do over and over. So it's basically a shortcut to automation. So we're, uh, there's some basic words we're gonna learn about the command line. And the first one is an interface, and that's a point of interaction. Um, the command line is an interface because it's, the point of interaction is the keyboard. And yeah, that's point of interaction. So the next one is a GUI. Uh, it's spelled G-U-I, and it's an acronym for Graphical User Interface. This is on most of our day-to-day -day devices, like websites, because it's just, um, it's graphical, so it's usually what you click on with the mouse. And so GUI is a Graphical User Interface. And everyone expects it, knows it, and is used on most of our day-to-day -day devices. So the next word is CLI, a command line interface. And it's any task, and the computer does the work. So if you write a program, then the computer does the work for that program. Uh, and then the last one is just a script, which is a text file with commands to run. So it's <coughs> a bunch of commands can be stored in one file so that you can run them later on. And uh, you put in the text file exactly what you'd run on the, on the command line. So those are the words. Um, I'll just summarize them real quick. An interface is a point of interaction, a GUI, is a graphical user interface, a CLI is a command line interface, and a script is a text file with commands to run. So um, I'm going to hand it over to my dad for some bash basics. Hey. Okay, uh, in case your hands get tired, you can save your applause to the end, uh, or you can just keep clapping because we like that too. Uh, who has used a command line before? Oh wow, lots of folks, okay. Who has never tried it? Okay, do you wanna try it? Yeah. Oh wow, okay. So the thing to know about the command line is as soon as you start using it, you're programming. Every line is a little program. All right, that's the great thing about, uh, I, I tell, tell my folks, uh, always, always be coding, ABC, because just by using that command line, you're coding all the time. And the, the command structure is really simple, right? You just have a command. In this case, the command name is echo. And then you have arguments you pass to it. So here's one program I'm running called echo. And then I'm going to pass one argument that's, this, that's the string hello. And then the output of that command is just hello. So that's what you use to print any statement. Every programming language has a print command or something like this, and echo is bash's print command. Am I forgetting some? Oh yeah, you can echo in other languages too, so you can remind me how you do this. So. Yeah. 
So that's Ni Hao, which is uh, hello in Chinese. And then uh, we've got Unicode support in this terminal, so we can. Well, thank you. I put it back to English. She was reminding me. Uh, and then we can echo in any language that's supported by um, by our terminal. So that's your first program. Echo hello. Hello world as usual. I made it even simpler today. It's just one, just one word. So that's kind of the basic thing is printing. And then another thing we need to do to be able to use a computer is to get around on the hard drive, get around to different files. So with a GUI, you would just click through into different folders, right? With the command line, you've got to use this command called, for example, cd, change directory. So we're going to change directory here into a subdirectory called documents, and then another one of that called talk. So this is where our files are for this talk today. So CD gets around, echo print stuff, and then I'll teach you one more really quick, ls, that lists files. So here's the files in this directory. Yeah, quick question? Right away, you could do it always. Okay, we'll save out. comments for the end though. Okay, questions, <laughs> quick questions you can throw them out. Comments we'll save for the very end, so we make sure we have time for everything. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, so to learn more about commands though, you're gonna need manual pages and quick reference help and stuff like that. So one of the ways to get more help, so if you're not, oh, I forget how to use CD. You know, that, that's possible anytime. So you gotta, you gotta use help to get more help with CD. And then it's gonna spit out a whole bunch of stuff that I'll let you read on your own. Exercise for the reader. There's help. There's another way to get help is dash dash help. And then for some commands, you're gonna use the manual page. So more on this later, I'll just quickly show you a couple of them uh, to get help. There's, a, there's another command called less, and to get help with less, you just type man, short for manual, for less. So you've already learned, what, one, two, three, four, five programs, echo, cd, ls, and man. Now who feels like they could do this? Come on, everybody. All right, there we go. Okay, and then we'll go back to Alice for uh, the next demo. Okay. So there is something called uh, a pipe character, which you might already know about, but in the command line, <coughs> it's used for um, making the output, which is hello, of one command be the input of another command. And in this case, it's going to be a program. Okay. It's going to be a program called Toilet, which is not exactly what you think it is. It's a weird name for something that makes hello the um, output of toy, uh, the output of echo, into um, into a word made of small um, smaller characters. So if I do this, then it will echo hello like this. So I felt like I really wanted to do more with this. Wanted to see what else there was to do with toilet. So uh, can we use other fonts? Or how about special effects? So maybe we can try the help. And it looks like this is just listing this stuff. So that didn't help enough. So if, if help doesn't work, you can always try man. And <laughs> it looks like if we want to do fonts, they're stored in the user slash share slash figlet <coughs> directory, which you can see below options. <coughs> so We'll try to, um, sorry. We'll try to list, like you, uh, like my dad said, um, we learned LS, right? So we can also do that by just listing a directory without having to be in it. So that lists all the fonts as you can see, it lists all the fonts in the user slash share slash figlet directory. 
and that's a lot. Um, it would be pretty hard to count these on our own, so we're going to use a program called Word Count, which it can also count lines to count the fonts. So we would do this, and then we'd pipe it, the output of the list command, um, into word count, which is WC, and then we'll add dash L to count the lines. So it looks like there are 21 fonts in here. So that's a lot, and uh, if we want to list all these fonts, we don't want to do it 21 times. So let's set up a loop to first print out the name of each font one by one. So we would go, which is font is where you, is how you're going to list the font. And then in here, we'll put in print. It's okay, we keep going. In parentheses, we'll put the user slash share slash figlet directory. Oh, it's, there's a little bug. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. You need an ls in there. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to list these fonts, right? So, so <laughs> we're going to list these fonts, right? And if we want to do this 21 times, we're going to tell it to list um, each font, as you can see right here. We're going to tell it to list each font once. And that would be 21 times. And <coughs> so... We'll say, okay, now we're going to, so this, what I was talking about, we're going to echo the font like this. And, and then it's done, right? So that's going to list the font, that's going to print out the font names one by one. Okay, printed those out. Now we want to see what they actually look like, right? So... <coughs> Instead of saying done, we're going to say echo, let's say, hey coders, because you are all coders now that you've learned basic commands. Um, and then we'll pipe that to toilet. And, <laughs> and we're going to do a couple filters, which is fun, right? So. Let's try border and metal. So that will do those two facts. Um, okay, sorry, I forgot to add done. <coughs> you always add done after a loop. So, done, and then that listed, oh my gosh, okay. That listed all the fonts. Um, now we got a little bug. Did anybody spot the bug? But we have a bug. Yeah, let's see if anybody can tell us. Who can spot the bug? It's so big that you can try Jesse. maximizing terminal. Uh, that's a, that's a good idea. Me. That's not the bug, though. And it did the effects. It's dashed. Now I can <coughs> copy, actually, might be right. Dash lowercase f font. Ah. Uh, oh. Yeah, you're you're right. Right. We get, specify the font there. Yeah, he. Font. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think they're right. Yeah, and then we'll also add dash t <coughs> to do the terminal width so it fits it. Okay, so does that make sense what we forgot? We forgot to actually put in within each iteration of the loop. There it so goes. that awesome. did it in all these cool fonts, which is. Pretty cool. So there's <laughs> a couple more effects we want to do, right? There's this one called. Oh my god. Okay. There's this one called Gay, which does a rainbow effect. 
which I thought would be pretty cool to show you guys. Let's put down arrow. Let's go. Okay, so instead of doing metal, we are going to do something called gay, which is does a rainbow effect. And that's my favorite, so. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite to do gay. And you guys can always try this at home. We have a quick reference sheet for anybody who wants to go try this at their house once they're done looking around at Linux Fest. So that is how to do a loop to echo a bunch of fonts in a program called Toilet. And so, thanks, thanks. Once, uh, we just did something pretty difficult. So now we're just gonna do some little fun things. And we have to have the volume up for this, of course. Um, and the first one's called Fortune. It just gives you a fortune. Uh, this Ooh, one's too long. One. <laughs> <laughs> the quote from Moby Dick. Tomorrow you can be anywhere. You will step on the night soil of many countries. It gives you a lot of Another one from Moby Dick. <laughs> kind of weird ones. Um, so that's fortune. <laughs> I don't know. This is luck. Yeah. This is luck. I'm on okay. Twain. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, there's one that I'm glad it didn't do. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so there's this another like another one called. It's not LS, but SL. It's meant for people who accidentally type in SL instead of LS, and it's pretty fun. Steam locomotive. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also just do um, dash capital F. Does make it flex. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty fun. And then there's one called Hollywood, which. What? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> then there's. It's okay for this one. And then there's one called Hollywood. You might not be able to see me typing this in, sorry. Uh. See if it works. Oh my god. There it goes. Yeah, and it's just, it's forcing it to run a bunch of random commands, and, yeah, 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, yeah, you can, all you have to do, um, sorry, <laughs> all you have to do to this is, um, it might tell you you don't have it installed, so you just, have to follow the instructions to install it, and then you can do Hollywood at home as much as you want. <laughs> to abort a command, you must press Control C, not close the terminal, because then something weird will happen. <laughs> <laughs> so those are demos, Fortune, SL, and Hollywood. And, okay. and oh, then I'm it. gonna hand it over to my dad, for some emoji. Okay. Okay, sorry, I gotta, Hollywood kind of leaves a mess. <laughs> so let's kill, <laughs> kill everything it, I don't know. Should I send it or no? How many for send? Oh, send oh, always. What the okay. heck? All right. <laughs> so that'll let him know. Okay. Daddy, so what am I demoing? Full oh, right. oh, full screen, thank you. Uh, question? Go ahead. Quick, quick question. Yes. Um, so does Hollywood actually run Tmux? It's not just for show? Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Would it delete your files? Nope. <laughs> nope. <That's good. laughs> yeah, it doesn't run like any bad commands. Okay, can you see in the back? Is that big enough? Okay, I got a question in the back, Al. Uh, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So when, when the thing like pops up in it, like says Hollywood, if you click on it, will it like um, send a picture of Hollywood to the computer or something? <laughs> no, it won't. It just does that for entertainment. There are that, yeah, that's, that's bash. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate, oh, whoops. I'm gonna demonstrate emoji. So emoji, of course, is 
the most important breakthrough in computer science in the last 10 years. Uh, Ubuntu 18.04, which is the operating system we're running here, uh, ships with emoji enabled in the terminal. Color emoji. And it's, of course, the best update ever. So here's how to type, uh, find and type emoji characters. So the first one way you can search is using this Unicode command, which I hope I have installed here. I do. OK, so pizza will find anything with a description of that <coughs> character matching pizza. Uh, food might show a little more. Yes, heckling from the front. Move your terminal over. Which way? Bit. Left or right? I don't know. I'm backwards right. from that. So <laughs> your emojis are on. Yeah, there we go. OK. Yeah. Okay, so if we're searching for food, we're going to find quite a few more. Let's see here. Pot of food, face-savoring, delicious food, shallow pan of food, and canned food. You can just imagine the room full of experts who decided the color and shape and name of all these. Uh, but you'll, they, they are quite useful, as you'll see uh, eventually. Just here. think of an online chat room. Exactly. Yes, that's, that's one great use. So uh, another way to search is I just have a big text file here. And I'm going to quick just kind of secretly introduce the grep command. <laughs> and grep is for searching through a file. So grep is just yet another program, uh, like uh, Unicode, for example, or LS. And we're going to search for the, the word pizza in this file right here. Clear? Nods? Yep. Yeah? OK. So there we go. One pizza. And then we should actually, since this is just this, this file I have right here, is just a dump of all the emoji. We're gonna all, we should also find the same food ones there. Uh, yeah, the shallow pan of food, pot of food, face saver and food. Do which one? Oh, the menu. Oh, yeah. So we use emoji quite a bit, and uh, we print out a menu once a week for, um, for what we're going to eat at home for dinner. And so what I can do is search through how many times we've had pizza or reference pizza in our menus. Let's see what we get there. I would say quite a few times, but let's see. Yeah, okay. Zata pizza, homemade pizza on a, and a salad and Nance on a lock. So mac and cheese for Alice, though. <coughs> Alice doesn't eat pizza. That's right. Uh, so one thing happened pretty quickly there. I don't know if you guys picked up on um, that we first were searching one file, right? And then we just slightly changed this command. So if we grab pizza from that file, and then if we just slightly can change that command a little bit, add a dash r. You know the dash r is necessary, but you go dash r, and then we're searching pizza instead for every file in that directory, joint mobile, and every subdirectory. So we just saved ourselves a huge amount of time. We could have searched through that one file for pizza pretty quickly, you just open it up and control f or whatever. But searching thousands of files took. <laughs> No, less than a second. So there's kind of your shortcut to automation that um, we, we kind of promised right in the beginning. OK, and now back to Alice. All right, well, uh, so okay, if anybody has any questions at all, now is the time that we would answer them. So any questions? Uh, do you have cowsay? Sorry? <laughs> cowsay. 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 Oh, you don't know cowsay? Is this safe? Is this safe for work? Yeah. OK, yeah. go ahead. Try it just yes. he wants to go try Kowsay. It's like C O W S A Y? Yep. Like yep. Kowsay something. Kowsay, okay. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Okay, I can install it though. Right. So in Debian based systems you apt, right? If it's Fedora, Red Hat, you're gonna use Yum. Yeah. General. Not anymore. Oh really? It's DNF now. Oh now now are you gonna use DNF? Jeez, Unless you're on Rel8. When did that change? Unless you're on Rel8, and then oh. it's back to Yum again. Okay. 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 So now you got to give it something to oh, say. You so echo. you want to? Yeah, just type It's it. like toilet. So you echo something to it. Okay. Yeah. Can I try it? Just. Yeah. You can. Well, cow say it in a word. Cow say it. We got it. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of. Yeah, looks okay. like a donkey. Okay, what other questions? What other questions? Does, do you have? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think they're good. Uh, so you can keep, yes. you can keep going. Yes. Is think toilet supposed to stand for something, or is it just a thing? Because it's thought just it was crazily, weirdly called toilet. Yeah. Okay. Yep, that's it. There's no excuse for that whatsoever. There is an explanation in the manual page. Uh, yeah. 
was yeah. there any yeah. reason yeah. that you used um, you, uh, a subcommand with ls instead of saying, you know, the directory slash star? Oh, he's he's saying, why did we do the for loop with, uh, with the parentheses that way? No preference, just one example. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so I guess we'll move on to just, like, some misc demos. And, okay, so first one's called dict. It looks up words in a dictionary. I bet probably most of you don't know, let's see, uh, alacrity. Like that. So oh. it gives you, first that it gives you, not. it gives you words, and then uh, up here it gives you meaning, liveliness, and eagerness. He accepted with alacrity. You have learned commands and a new word. And that is dict. Um, will we do the alarm one? Sure. I don't have the file. It's on there. Or just the other way it's typed out will work. Okay, can you do? Sure. Okay, I'll do one. Uh, this is an alarm. So whenever Alice is uh, playing a game, I, uh, <laughs> I make sure there's a timer. And uh, uh, what's that? So it, um, it, if you've ever played Minecraft, it has flapping wings of the Ender Dragon, and then a roar, and then it shuts down a br any browser I'm using and Minecraft. That's okay, that work? Okay, so that's gonna happen in one minute, and it's not gonna close the terminal, which is good. So, yeah. <coughs> um, oh, okay. So imagine you're uh, playing a uh, a game in a web browser here. <coughs> Twilio. Oh, Slitherio. Okay, you're playing Slitherio. <laughs> okay. Mm, it's live demo. You never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so you can see the clock up at the very top. When it hits that, when it hits 9:57. Oh, it worked. Is it? And then it shuts down first. <laughs> it says Alice. Sword. Alice, stop. What does it say? Alice, stop this instant or face the megabyte sword. Okay. That's what it says. Okay. Right. So, yeah, the next one would be YouTube DL. Um, what would be the URL? There? Oh, yeah. So, sorry, this one's me too. So, YouTube DL. Question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, it, you said it shuts down Minecraft as well. Does it save uh, the server file before it shuts it down? No, it does not. Oh, I can't have oh. yeah. <laughs> I know, so you, like you have to be ready. You could get him one of these, maybe. Like a thirty-second warning or something. Yeah, <laughs> there's only three wing flaps, and then boom, that's it. That's no, it's you four. Get. Oh, four. Thank you. You would not talk to me. Okay. Uh, so YouTube DL is handy uh, for for uh, this talk as well. I mean, it, it'll be on YouTube, but um, you know, when it's on YouTube, you don't really have control of it, so you want your own copy. Make sure it's a Creative Commons license, and then you can run this command, and you can pass in a YouTube video ID, like that, or you can pass the full uh, URL to the video, uh, TUB, something like that, and then, and then the actual video, and then it'll give you a copy of it locally. Oh, and just as a comment, it also works for the like Daily Motion, lots of other video sites too, despite the name YouTube DL. Oh, thank you. So from the crowd, it works for uh, lots of other uh, video hosting sites besides YouTube. Yes, there's, if you go to dash dash help, you'll, there's a command which will show you all the sites you can do. Oh, awesome. Okay, let's we'll get a quick shot. I have a question. Uh, yes, one second. Let's we'll find the the sites. Oh, we're, somewhere in here. Okay, wow. It's, it's got <laughs> a lot of these. Yeah. A little bit of a like, rabbit tell hole you what here. To do? Okay. Uh, yeah. Question in the front. Yeah. Does it play a YouTube video in a terminal, or does it redirect you to a YouTube site? It just gets the video files for you onto your hard drive. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. it just saves them. What format does it use? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, Whatever format the original the, the, yeah, the one oh, okay. on the original YouTube The question video. was, what formats does it give you? And it's going to be whatever format it's got on, they've got on YouTube, okay. apparently. <clears throat> so no transcoding? Uh, no, it, it runs pretty fast, so I would think it's just downloading, not transcoding. There might be options in the manual. No, it looks like there's a lot of options in the manual. <laughs> 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 
Oh, and there's, do you want me to do any of these or just, you want to skip to that one? Um, I'm gonna do. If you dig into the one, arguments, you can, you can ask it to get okay. any of the resolutions that are on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, if you guys were here last year or the year before, my dad did a talk on about how they we made an automatic chicken door that opens at sunrise and closes at sunset. Mm. And um, we don't we don't have to operate it manually. Um, it clo it closes automatically and opens automatically, but we can also force it to close or open <coughs> from the terminal. So we use something called a Raspberry Pi, and it's basically like what is it? Kind of, I can't. It's remember. a small computer. Yeah, small, cheap, low power computer. I have one. All yeah, right. Awesome. Anybody else have a Raspberry Pi? Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> no. It's your target audience. Okay, um, oh, droid life. And, we're gonna, <laughs> uh, and then we'll say door open. And then it won't, we can't connect to it from here. But uh, Yeah, if, if this was on like our home computer, then it would. But it will open it if we are close there. So, yeah. So one thing I thought was cool about that is that it was really easy for me to make that little command called door open, and then the kids can run it, you know, if they're, the chickens are locked out or something, then they can run that, or they can, what's the, there's like a photo one too, I think. Yeah, you can do like coop photo, I think, yeah. and then it will take a photo of, of, if, of like what's in the coop, because we have a camera there. Yeah. So that's cool, I guess I'm handing it over to you again. Okay. Go ahead. Is there a question. man page for door? There is. I did not write any documentation for door. Oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Yeah. I found the, the, the option list of strapters. Did you want to? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Extractors. That's an interesting way to describe them. Okay. So if I do list extractors here. So then this is, we're back to YouTube DL. And one thing that's kind of amazing is every little program is just, it's, you know, there might have been thousands of people working on it. You don't even know, and you get all of that functionality. Um, just you can install it through your, your package manager. You get all that functionality for, for free, usually. Oh, my gosh. So these are all the sites you can pull video from? Yeah, try WC-L. Okay, let's count, let's count how many. Alice, you want to do this? Why don't you no. count, <laughs> count, count how many extractors there are for YouTube DL. So these can are. Just do word count. Yeah, same thing you did for the. Nope, no pipe. So I'll do a word count and then add that to do lunch. And that's 1,173 one, one, one one sites that you can take videos from, not just YouTube. That's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what is the dash L option for word count? Yeah. Um, it's basically a filter that just counts the lines instead of the words. Gotcha. Yeah. What happens if you leave it off? Yeah, once you try it, try it without dash L, see what happens. Okay. Word. It will count the words. Okay, I guess. Okay, I get three different counts there. The oh. first one looks to match the lines. Okay. The other ones I don't know offhand. Words and characters. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So lines, words, and characters? Mm -hmm. So if okay. so if we add the dash L, then it will only count the lines, not just the words. The not, not the words, and the lines and the characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, we could do. Would you do me a favor and run Unicode disk? Disk. D I S K. Yeah. I'll allow that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Now we're missing some fonts, maybe. Yeah, that's. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh there it is. I mean, there's that one. <laughs> But that that would have made doing one of my presentations easier had I known about that command because the emoji that I wanted wasn't available in LibreOffice. Uh, uh, so that no. that could have saved me some work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. We can, can I show them my uh, battery command? Fine. <laughs> so I was really proud of this. Uh, they, just, with that emoji, geez. since they're just characters, you know, here's okay. a here's a command called echo. Well, I made a command called battery. Except you use emoji, like it's the battery emoji, instead of just typing in. So it's a little challenging to run, <laughs> but once you do it, you get the uh, amount of battery uh, 
uh, the, the capacity as well as the current rate, and uh, it's plugged in, so it's at 100%. And it's, oh, I'm losing a little bit of capacity there. He really likes this. I really like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the highlight of his career. Yeah, that was so the highlight of my career. Oh, you're so different. Okay. Yeah. So you going to do history? Or? History. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, so um, there's grep, right? And it finds file it finds stuff in a file and but we're going to have that piped to a command called history other way around hmm? are you you're piping history to grep yeah, right piping okay. history to grep yeah i knew that okay um and then we'll and we'll see what words have i looked up by doing dict because Dict is the one where you look up words, right? And so if we run this, it will tell us what words we've looked up. Okay. We've. Are we? Have we really looked up Parmesan? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So um, what I use this for sometimes, Al, is I don't remember how to spell a word. And so. <laughs> like weird. Yeah, like weird. And I type in the word. Show them how you type in the word, and then you type part of it, and then it'll complete it for you. Um, That's yeah. what I was okay. doing. Okay. <laughs> That was a brave, brave one, actually. Okay. Okay, and then it gives you options if it... Okay. So she, we tell them what you hit, what key you um, hit. I hit tab, and that does tab complete. Uh, but if there's no... It looks like entailment is not a word, Dad. Huh. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, <laughs> so... <laughs> Maybe that's why I do <laughs> So if we... That looks like... It looks like there's no entrails. <coughs> huh. no entrails. But that's not. It says entails right funny. there. <laughs> yeah. But that's my so, tab complete. I probably have, I have a bug in my tab. Yeah, there's. Yeah. So that's history. Yeah, and you can install, I don't know, a thousand dictionaries and thesauruses and other languages as well. And so I've installed yeah. a couple here. I have Moby thesaurus and it probably doesn't know which one to pick from. So. Uh oh. What oh are you, wait. What are you <laughs> okay. Let's see if this knows Chinese. I don't think I installed a Chinese dictionary. You can try. You so did. Hey. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, I've defeated Dick. Oh, <laughs> yep, you did. Okay. <laughs> um, we could do. Should we? Should we do the stop motion or an echo? Uh, I'll show them how I made the stop motion. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. And show them the actual stop motion too. Okay. So, uh, one thing. <laughs> <It's nice. laughs> <laughs> okay, so one project that was kind of cool is we, we hooked up a camera to the Raspberry Pi and um, again, just a small computer and, the, and a, like a little webcam and then I set it on a table and I pointed it at a uh, butterfly net. Or we're, like we're raising butterflies basically? Yeah, and every minute it would take a picture, but before it would take the picture it would make a noise so the kids knew when it was going to take a picture of something so they could move something around, for example. And so every minute it was taking a picture, there's just a little script on there that said photo, wait 60, photo, wait 60, and it just kept running forever. And then it was saving all these images onto the hard drive, and then we ran one command to uh, stitch them back into a movie. And I'm not going to dig too far into that, but I have it here just called stitch, and I'll give it to you if you want it. But what it does is, is it runs this other command called ffmpeg, and it says ffmpeg, take all these images, stitch them into a movie, and add this music to it. And it does it all for you. And then, should I just play the... Oh, thank you. So that's the chrysalis, and then they came out. like moving around Lego guys and stuff too. Um. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not a very rigorous stop motion. It's just kind of. 
So, <laughs> yeah. We made that with the command line. Which is, yeah. Uh -huh. Did I stop? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. You can stop the music. Oh, too. okay, okay. Sorry. I like it. That was a good song. Okay. Anyway, those Yo, the images. Uh, it was quite a quite a big. I mean, I was like 1.3 gigabytes of images, and uh, and all you do is just just set it off and running, and then and then step back and let it go, and then you can come back and stitch together the video whenever you want. How big is your MP4 file? Well, that's a good question. So from 1.3 gigabytes of images, we made a 124 megabyte. Uh, <coughs> video so a tenth of the size of all of those images combined that's not bad i think we obviously we down sampled a little bit or something there i don't know yeah well, it's a pretty um, static shot too so you can have a lot of stuff that's yeah. not changing yeah. it. oh how about ebooks so this is something that we've done I can write it. Wait, okay okay so this is something we've done quite a few times uh alice has uh you know written a little story and i said oh we'll just write it and um give it this you know, put it in this directory, and I'll, and I'll help you make it into an ebook. And then let's see if I can find source ebooks, right? <coughs> oh, you want to do this? Okay. So there's one in. Ma okay. Yeah. Go for it. Like, no. Oh, make one. Okay. Okay. So here's Max's airport trip, and then what you have to do to make an ebook is. Uh, is go in here and format it a certain way. And so you, you make the little thing at the beginning, percent sign, title, next line, percent sign, author, next line, percent sign, date, next line. And then these funky looking things, just pound and uh, chapter name. And if you, you just follow this format, make the chapters have this, this, this format. And it's, it's following uh, pretty closely a, a format called Markdown. And uh, you can do some simple formatting, but really what, you're, what you got here is just the plain text of the book itself. You don't do any formatting or layout. You let that do it for you. You just give it hints. Oh, here's a new section here. Here's a new section. Call it chapter one, the car drive. These underbars right here say italicize that. Anyway, you, you, you follow this format pretty simpler at this very simple text format. Focus on the text and then uh, you run a command called Pandoc to generate an EPUB uh, book out of that. So an ebook that you can read on a Kindle or uh, any kind of ebook reader or your phone. Uh, so Alice made a few stories this way, and then to make the book, uh, what's the command? Pandoc, uh, table of contents. Should we just run it? Make mybook.epub. Oh, okay. Well, we can remake it here. We'll throw it away and just remake the book. So, boom, we made a book. Show it. Open it up. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it's trying to open it with the wrong program. Make so. you. Oh. <laughs> so, FB Reader is favorite book reader or something. Nice little open source ebook reader. Ooh, that's bright. Uh, gives you chapter markers. The ebook readers will recognize these chapters and let you flip between them. And then, uh, and then you can read the book. This is. Don't a, let oh, don't read it. it. Okay, sorry. So, <laughs> sorry, that book Jeez. is pending publication. We can't show the manuscript at this time. A lot of shade on <laughs> Max in that book. Yeah, there was, Max was uh, the subject of that book. He's my uh, brother. Any questions about the ebook generation or the video generation from images or, yeah, so, I mean, one thing I, I guess I, I love about the command line is that you just gotta find the right little magic incantation and then you can make books or movies or transform them uh, or do it a thousand times or a million times uh, with, with kind of the same basic format, command arguments. Is there a good book for, is there a good book for teaching this? Uh, that is a good question. Um, I started with a book called Unix that was rocks, and I think it's out of print. <laughs> I don't know. Does anybody have suggestions for a good beginning command line book? There, there is a. What? There's one at the Twilio booth. And we also have a quick reference sheet, which is like some of the basic things we taught, and anyone can have them once we're done with the talk, which is in like one minute. <laughs>
Yeah, I've got a big thick one. It's like Linux command line something, but it's, it's like it's ten years shelf. old. So a Linux command line book? Yeah. yeah I, it's a great big thick thing that I've had forever. Yeah, I feel I, I'm a little embarrassed. I don't have a good suggestion for you. So I'll leave the quick reference sheets back here on the table if you want to grab one. On the way up. Actually, I'll leave them back on the chair. No bang. Get rid of the exclamation point. Yeah, I know. I guess my approach to learning was to find any way I could to okay, learn. Well, so Bash is the programming language you're working in right there, and then just doing it. So I forced myself to, okay, I'm not going to click through on the finder to find a file. I'm going to force myself to use the command line, and then eventually it starts to become natural. <laughs> I don't know if this is good. Okay, and I think we're out of time. So thank you, everybody. Time for having you. It's time.